Number one, use an ethernet cable. It is your friend. For those of us who are old enough to remember what plug-in phones look like, that's what an ethernet cable kind of looks like, like a plug-in phone. And if you don't already have one, get one. It's one of the best investments that you can make. You can get them on Amazon, Best Buy. Um, I think even Walmart carries them, 10 to $20, depending on how much length of cord you need. Um, you plug it right into your little internet or cable box and right into the back of your computer. And if your computer doesn't have an ethernet cable port, you can get a USB ethernet adapter. Um, we found that presenters who use Wi-Fi, especially if it's a school, hotel, some kind of shared Wi-Fi, will end up having those more glitches than people who are just plugged in. One of the cool things about Webinar Jam as a platform is it shows you your signal strength throughout. So if you're if you're getting lots of people saying, oh, it's freezing, it's whatever, you'll know if it's on your end if your signal's down to one bar, just like you'll know if your phone call's cutting out and you're down at one bar, it's probably you. Um, and that helps us know if the problem is on the attendee side as well. So invest in an ethernet cable, it really does make a big difference. Um, invest in some good lighting and good lighting doesn't have to be expensive. Um, I am right next to some really big windows and most of the day that's adequate for me, especially if I can turn and get that natural light on me. Uh, that totally, totally works. We also have, I like to offer lots of redundancies and lots of options. Um, so you can also get something like this. This is just a little, I don't know if you guys can see, it's a little clip on light and it can clip on the top of your computer or even your phone. It just turns on with a button. It charges through a USB port. I have three of these. I love them because I can put them wherever I need to, to fill in any kind of lighting gaps. Okay, these are about 10 to $15 on Amazon and a really great investment. Can you guys tell the difference just with that? and I can change how bright it is, okay? Um, the next level up, if you guys teach any kinds of lessons, I really, really recommend these. I have three of them on my desk. But my desk is the size of most people's like um, dinner tables. And I can't show you because my webcam, but um, they're just these ring lights on a tripod. These happen to have like a, a, a camera or phone thing. so. These ones are about 50, 60 bucks, but that gives you some options of free lighting or of cheap light. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> My husband's walking over to help me. Ah, I dropped it. That's okay, I got this one. So have good lighting. Um, in the online course, we actually have a lighting guide that shows you the different lighting options and what really works best and how you can kind of fill in, okay? Um, I've done some, some conferences with some very uh, like high-end artists. And the thing that has surprised attendees the most is that their lighting and audio quality was negligible. You don't wanna come across like that, right? Which leads to the next thing, which is have a quality microphone. Uh, there are a few things in this world more distracting than bad audio sound. So Chuck, you sounded amazing in that brief moment that you just talked to me. Uh, let me share with you some of the issues that we have heard. Um, we have one, we've had one presenter who uh, used his laptop, which is fine usually, except that your laptop microphone is built into your laptop. So it picks up any sound of your laptop. So anything from typing on the keys, it's going to pick up really loud. It's going to pick up papers, shuffling. We've actually had presenters whose entire presentation was disrupted by shuffling papers on their laptop or even touching the microphone or dropping their hands on their desk that will get picked up by your internal microphone. So I really, really, really recommend an external microphone, something that isn't built into your computer. Um, you can start with the ones that are built in on some headphones. I don't use them because it creates too many audio inputs for me. Um, so these earbuds that I'm using don't have it, but you can get them that, that have the built in. Um, just be aware if you're wearing a collared shirt like we are, 
that it doesn't rub on the collar. Okay. So we've had presenters just grab a safety pin or even a paper clip and just stick that microphone so that it stays in one place. You can also just turn the earbud piece if, if that's accessible so that that microphone isn't going to tap on anything. Um, I will be honest, that is a mistake that I made early on in my career and you only make it once. Okay. Um, the next option up is, hang on, my boys have my, Connor, okay. I need that microphone, buddy. Can you bring it here? Um, the next option up is a stand microphone. It plugs into your USB port. I really look at the features of the microphone. So the features that I like are it's on a stand. Obviously it's external. It uh, has, it plugs into a USB port so that my computer, I can tell it that that's the audio input I wanna have. I like having a gain control that controls how much signal I'm putting into the microphone. That way I can, if I'm farther away, I can just turn up the gain a little bit and it's gonna pick me up just as well. Um, I also like having the built-in headphone port and I like having a mute button. Is that a lot? Okay, so this little guy, less than 50 bucks on Amazon. It's a little condenser microphone with a stand. It plugs in to an audio or to USB. It has the headphone, so I can use it as my single source for audio in and audio out. And the volume is actually a mute button. And when it's muted, it's red. And when it's live, it's green. It makes a huge difference, you guys. <laughs> Um, I don't even use the mute on Zoom anymore. I just mute and unmute my microphone button. And then it's got my uh, volume control and my gain right on there. So highly recommend something like that. There you go, buddy. Thank you. It's okay. He's a euphonium player. Super helpful. And then this is my next level up. Um, I use this one to record a lot of my podcasts. I forgot to mention I have a podcast. Um, and this one's about... $150 or so. This is a blue Yeti, but it has all the same features, except I can change my condenser pattern. So if Chuck and I were sitting across the table from each other, I could pick up him and I could pick up me. Or if I was in my ukulele group and we were all in a circle, I could turn on the circle pattern. It would pick up everybody. So you probably don't need something like this nice, but invest in at least some kind of external microphone it's gonna make a huge difference in how you present and how you present yourself and how the attendees experience it. You guys are seeing my PowerPoint, right? Okay. Uh, number four, do the training. <laughs> um, the, the presenters who actually get in, try things out, know exactly all of the, the tools available to them, create much more robust and experiential um, opportunities for the, the students, the attendees. Um, so do the training and get one-on-one -on -one help. When's our one-on-one -on -one day, Rania, for Arizona? She'll pull it up and drop a link. Um, yeah, our one-on-one -on -one day is January 19th. I think about six of you have already signed up so far. Um, I'm just going to drop the link in the chat, and that is to sign up for a 15-minute um, sound check uh, with me. Yeah, so, and you'll have your, you, you should, you all have your live room links already, so you can actually get in there into your own room, see your own face, see your own name, try everything out, and then book the one-on-one -on -one time with Rania if there's any additional information that you need or things that you want to try out, questions that you might have, okay? Uh, have a plan. So the more moving parts to your session, the more thorough your plan should be. Just like as a band director, I'm not going to show up to the concert without a playlist of what songs we're doing. And everybody knows those are the songs we're doing. We know who's going to announce what. We know who's going to talk on the microphone at what time and who's going to ask for money because we're a community band. Okay. Um, so have that plan and go through it. So if you're going to be doing polls, know when you're going to be doing those polls, what are those going to be? Can you do it on the fly? Yes. But if you have it really well planned out, that builds this level of trust with your attendees and they're way more likely to be interactive with you. Um, along those same lines, 
practice your presentation, go through it a few times on your own, get somebody to watch you go through it. If you don't feel comfortable doing it with one person watching and gathering their feedback, you can actually go live in your room and it will automatically record. And then you can just send me an email and be like, Hey, Lisa, I just went live in my room and recorded it. Could you send it back to me? And, and I will send you the MP4 and you can, you can watch it and do some self-assessment as well. Um, which is a great way to learn. If you're like, I don't know if my microphone sounds good or not, just go live. It's going to automatically record it. I'll send you the MP4. Sound good? Um, do, 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 do. Oh, be really engaging. Um, we're, we're used to presenting. If you're like me, I've presented a lot in person and I'm used to seeing those facial reactions. I'm used to being able to go up and harass people. I'm used to being able to stand on a chair or to hold up my to-do list and people go, oh, but Elisa, you're so busy. How do you get everything done? And I go, you guys, not everything's crossed off, right? I don't get everything done. It's much harder to do these things on this tiny, tiny screen. So you actually have to be a little bit larger than life. Be really dynamic in your vocal inflections and, and, and even more than you would be like on the podium or in the classroom, because that's how it's going to translate. Okay. If you're thinking, well, I'm going to be just a little more subdued and a little more professional, you're not going to be engaging as much as you probably could be. I hope that that sounds okay. All right. <laughs> uh, here's the next thing. Be yourself. Okay. Just be authentic. If things go wrong. Okay. And you're starting to, you're watching the chat a lot and people are like, Hey, my thing is freezing or where do I get that handout? Or, and, and they're asking questions and you're not ready for that. Or, or if your PowerPoint doesn't work for some reason, or the video starts in the middle of the video, instead of at the beginning of the video, things just happen, right? Or your internet goes down and it takes you a few minutes to get logged back in. First of all, most of us are used to those kinds of technical snafus nowadays. And you're, if you acknowledge it and just go, you know what, you guys, how many of you have had that happen before? They're going to be like, oh yes. Oh, you know what? That happens to Chuck too. I feel so much better about myself. Okay. So you owning anything that goes up or just being yourself is going to really open their hearts to you. And that's going to in turn help them connect with you and, and learn better. Okay. Uh, be confident, right? So even if things do go wrong, even if, you know, there's a typo in your PowerPoint, just be confident because you totally got this. And I have wonderful news for you. Remember how I was saying in the chat, like, what if there's these things going on? You can almost ignore the chat completely because we've got you so supported. You're going to have a room monitor there that's watching the chat. And if people are asking for a link to your, your book or your website or whatever resource you just happened to mention, but you forgot to grab a link for because you aren't used to mentioning it, you've got somebody there to help you. And don't worry too much about if tech things happen because you're going to have Rania or myself there as well to jump in and be able to help and support you through the tech stuff as well. Um, we'll even go so far as if you're, you're accidentally muted, we'll come on and say, hey, you're muted or your microphone quit working or like, we'll, we'll give you a heads up. All right. So be confident because you are totally supported. Um, <clears throat> don't be afraid to ask questions. Okay. We've done this a lot. We've supported hundreds and hundreds of presenters who have gone on to have wonderful presentations and, and epic conferences. And that's what we really want for Arizona this year too. And you guys are all totally a part of that. So please, if you have questions about any part of your presentation, whether it's, you know, does my PowerPoint look okay? Or, you know, how could I improve the sound quality or does this microphone work? get that one-on-one -on -one time or send us an email, give us a call. I've been fielding texts all day long uh, from Florida music educators, presenters, because their conference is next week. And we're happy to do it. It's actually, I'm not going to speak for Rania, but for me, working with you guys is one of the best parts of my job. Oh, hands uh, down. Yeah. We, we absolutely love it. Um, so please don't hesitate to ask questions. Uh, this is my contact information. 
and I'm very accessible. Um, my phone, email, you can Facebook message me. Um, I'm really, really easy to find. I have a website. I'm on Instagram. You can find me on WhatsApp. Okay. I'm not on Twitter. You guys, I can't, I can't do Twitter, but you can find me many other places. All right. We've reached the point of our presentation where I can now look at the chat and field your questions. You may notice that I am the type of presenter who I am easily distracted when I'm presenting. And so I tend to ignore the chat while I'm presenting, but now we've gotten through it. Do we have any questions? You can also feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question out loud. You're welcome um, to. One thing I do wanna say is um, for those of you who would like to review any of the training, um, I am gonna drop the link right now to our presenter support page. Um, that is a really important resource for you and I, I would bookmark that in case you haven't already done so. Um, on there, you're gonna find um, some webinar training uh, videos, uh, our practice room, which we're gonna take you to right now. Um, and then there's also a place where you can submit any um, handouts, slide deck, or videos that you would like for us to preload into your webinar room. Um, and there's also the, the link to book a one-on-one -on -one practice time with me. So like that page is your, you know, your, your magical place. <laughs> uh, Alyssa Hansen says, will recordings of our sessions be available to us slash attendees after the event? That's the plan. Yes. Good question. Yes. Any other questions? All right. Uh, so this is going to be kind of fun. Uh, we've now moved out of the here's the things not to do and here's the things to do. And we're going to go into webinar jam now and just do a really quick little trial run here. So. I just dropped a link in the chat for you to join as attendees. So what I recommend you do is you have two parts of your screen, keep your Zoom open because I want you to watch what I'm doing on the Zoom screen share. And then also open your browser. Uh, Webinar Jam really likes Chrome browser. So if you're trying to open it in Safari, you're probably gonna be okay as an attendee. It's much easier on the attendee side. Uh, for presenters, Chrome browser is, hands down the best experience. Um, and usually it's up to date. All right, so if you've never logged into Webinar Jam before, please understand that this platform cares deeply about the attendee experience. So everything that it's done is, yeah, it's trying to make it easy for you, but it's really trying to make it great for the attendees. And we get so much feedback from these events that we're still convinced that this is, this is a good platform for that. Okay, uh, so it's gonna take you through this last minute checklist to just remind you of some, some things. Remember how we talked about that ethernet cable? Same kind of deal. Um, maximize your internet connection. Also free up resources. For some reason on the computer I'm pointing out that you can't see, um, my Windows computer, if I'm running an Excel file, it drains my CPU. So I close all those programs when I'm presenting online because your CPU will also slow it down. Uh, it does like you to wear headphones. That's the best experience for you, especially if you're on a panel discussion or you're doing the session with, with anybody else in, in that shared space. Um, if you're worried about how you look, uh, just remember that you need to be authentic to yourself <laughs> and wear headphones um, for the best experience. And then of course, avoid distractions. Put your euphonium player in his room. Uh, it's going to force you to test your video and audio. Um, woo, worked for me. You guys could probably hear that little bit of feedback. That's because it was my audio out speakers coming into my, my microphone here. Um, so you might get a little feedback if you don't already have headphones in. And that's because it's testing your audio in and audio out at the same time. Okay. It's trying to make it easy for you. Okay, preach it. So let me walk you through the controls really quickly. You probably noticed that my audio was already on. So I habitually, and that's just the default when you log in, 
it assumes that the audience is going to want to hear you, right? Uh, so the audio's on. I usually just turn it off when I first get in until I'm thoroughly oriented and prepared for my session. So you've got your camera on, camera off, camera on, camera off. You've got your microphone on and off. You've got your screen share and it will let you choose if you want to share your entire screen. You can see I obviously have two monitors. Here's the applications I have open or I can even share an individual Chrome tab. So I've got some options there. Uh, it does have a whiteboard functionality, which can be pretty fun. Uh, it even lets you write over the top of your PowerPoint presentation, which can be pretty fun. And all of these controls are accessible to all of the presenters in the room. So if you're doing a session with someone else um, with you, you're both gonna have control over the whiteboard. You're both gonna have control over the PowerPoint. I don't think we have many of us sharing sessions. Um, this is your go live button. You don't have to worry about that. Your tech person or your room monitor will do that. You don't have to worry about the panic button either. We hardly ever have to worry about the panic button. Over here, you can see it's telling me I'm off air. I'm not live yet. And you can see it from the attendee side that I'm obviously not on air. Hey, I can Lisa, see that. Yeah. Can you, sorry. Are you able to like zoom in on this a little bit? It's pretty yeah. tiny. Mm -hmm. I can zoom in on the Chrome tab if I can figure it out. Uh, oh, there you go. I don't know. Is that improving it? Yes, that's fantastic. All right. So <laughs> thank you. Hopefully you saw that that uh, that one of the nice things about Webinar Jam and Chrome is it is responsive in its web capabilities. So I can change the size of the window that I'm viewing it on, and it's still going to go ahead and, and adapt so that it's creating the best experience for your attendees. Okay. So I can see that there are 18 people in the room and you'll be able to see when you're presenting how many people are in the room. This is your timer. So if you're like, I got 40 minutes, go. Um, it's actually gonna be right there for you. And there's the signal. You can see I'm plugged into my ethernet cable. So I got five bars. Um, we can enable or disable the chat. We usually just keep it enabled. And in fact, you can see I've got this little red dot that tells me that somebody has typed in the chat. So you can actually be typing in the chat while you're waiting for the session to start. I can even put a sticky note here. Okay. Um, Ron, you just did a private chat. That means that only the uh, people who are on this side of the screen. So we call this like the presenter side. I think of it like it's the stage. And right now the curtains are closed because I haven't clicked the go live button. When we click go live, that's like the curtains are open. So anybody who's on the stage behind the curtain, we can be talking to each other. We can be visiting and the audience isn't going to see that when we're ready to go live. It's just like with a concert. Everybody set. We click go live, that opens that curtain. It starts the video stream. Uh, so that also means that all the attendees can be in there and, and chatting just like they could be in an auditorium, okay? Uh, none of the things you're showing are showing up on your screen. No, they should show up on your screen on Zoom. Or if you're in Webinar Jam, you should be seeing the chat in Webinar Jam too. Uh, as a presenter, I can click on these little three dots. I can see that this is this person's email address. I can edit their chat. So if they accidentally say something like the F-bomb, I could delete that. Um, I could reply privately to this person and say, just click reconnect at the top of the screen. <laughs> okay, so lots of options with the chat. You don't have to worry very much about settings, uh, except we will talk about thumbnail size and thumbnail position. Uh, we'll turn all of these things off for you that you don't really need, okay? Uh, you will be able to see the attendees that are in the room who are live. We aren't live yet, so obviously there's no live attendees. You can do polls and you can enter them in right before your session starts. And I'll show you how to do that really quickly. And 
I find that starting with a relatively silly question or something that's really easy for them to answer gets them engaged right from the start. So favorite colors or what are you drinking this morning or, um, you know, what kind of music do you listen to? Really easy things like that. Okay. Um, I always click display results at the end of the poll. That's just whether you want those to be public or not to the people in the room. <clears throat> I click preview. I click publish. I click end poll, reset, and now it's stuck in there. Okay. And don't worry if that was like, whoa, super fast, because we can help you with that at the start of your session. The point is, if you have polls and want to use that, you can. Um, I recommend polls for five answers or fewer. If you're going to be asking like more than five, then just ask it in the chat and have them respond via chat. Polls are great for big sessions that uh, get everybody going. Okay. And we'll push that in a second. Offers you don't have to worry about. Videos are things that you we can pre-upload for you and that play really beautifully. Um, you're not going to see that in Zoom because Zoom isn't as good at the video play as Webinar Jam is. So I'll show you that when we go live here in a second. Files are the handouts that you'll send us. Um, we found that it's best to just do one handout that we can push throughout the session instead of having like five handouts that we have to repeatedly get. Um, so if you have multiple documents or multiple resources that you want to share, put them all on one PDF and send that to us. And we love doing the concierge service of getting all of this set up for you. So except for your polls, um, but your handouts, videos, and even your slides, we will pre upload into your session room for you. Okay. What's the due date for that, Rania? Do you remember? It's usually a week before the conference. Uh, sorry, just a second. You're fine. Um, January 26th is when we'd like to have your information. Oh, thank you, Chuck, for posting that. Um, and I, again, I, I know I just want to reiterate this. You can absolutely add stuff the day of your presentation, but I got to tell you, it's I wouldn't want to be stressed to think, oh, is it going to load, right? So like, just get us your stuff by the 26th. We'll take care of it and it'll be in your room ready to go. Yeah, let me show you. You can you can add a video right at the end here, or right at the beginning. Forgive me. I'm gonna enter one right now. So you just go add a new video. Here's your URL. I'm gonna give it a name. Oh. <gasps> No. <laughs> okay. Sure. Same thing with files. You can actually just add a file right from your computer. Does not take long. So don't worry if you if you want to be working on it like uh, right up until the wire. You totally can be, and then you just upload it right into into your room. Okay. Any questions so far on any of the controls, any of the view, or any of the options here before we go live? And it's okay if you don't too. Uh, Michelle says, where would you access a website? Um, Michelle, would you mind turning on your um, microphone? like? What do you mean? Like if you want to show a website as a part of yes. your presentation? Yes. Oh, easy peasy. So I would have that website up. And just have it in a tab is what you're saying. Uh-huh. Okay. And then I would go screen share. Okay. And I would pick which tab I want to show. One of the things I really like about Webinar Jam is that it shows you exactly what your audience is seeing. So remember when I was like, are you guys seeing my PowerPoint? There's no doubt when you're in Webinar Jam what your audience is seeing because it's here on this main screen. So this is exactly what they're seeing. And if I wanted to have a better experience for myself, I'm obviously full screen, but I can separate it into, into different windows and have it side by side. Okay, I can't right now because it's, 
being silly. All right. Cool. Did that Thank answer you. your question? No, okay. that's perfect. Just know that, um, there, that because it's browser based, there isn't a great way for it to share computer sound because it can't steal your, um, audio from your computer. So there's some ways around that. Uh, way number one is the easiest way, I think, which is really just having your microphone on and playing it through external speakers. You guys could all hear when I started that video, right? And that's just because the audio was coming out through my monitor and it was being picked up by my microphone. So that's kind of the backdoor MacGyver way. High quality audio, no, but audio nonetheless. You can also use a software solution like uh, ManyCam, it's M-A-N-Y-C-A-M, which allows you to mix audio uh, inputs and also video inputs as well. And when you log into Webinar Jam, you just choose ManyCam as your audio input. Uh, the, the other one, the one that I use, it's only available on Mac computers, not on Windows computers. It's called Loopback and it's a paid software. Um, but because I do this for a living, I can't live without it. Um, it allows me to mix multiple audio inputs into a single audio output. I love it. Any questions on computer sound or anything else screen sharey wise? Yes. Go for yes. it, Matt. Hi, Matt Johnson. Hey, um, would it be possible for me to play along to a track that I generate from my computer? Heck yeah. Absolutely. Okay, well, you just said I couldn't share from my computer. So how would uh, I do that? Uh, I will show you. So do you want them to see the track or no? Uh, no, I'm sorry. You said you couldn't, that you couldn't share audio on on this platform from the computer. <clears throat> right, except for the three ways that I just gave you. So okay. if you're playing the audio through your speakers, for example, your microphone will pick it up and they'll hear that. No, um, I, wanna, I wanna play drums to a track. Yeah, and you want them to hear the track and the drums. Yeah. Okay, so what I would do is grab that track and play it through external speakers so like I just had that audio coming through my monitor and then you, um, and then you just play along with it and it's going to be perfectly synced because the audio is all coming into your microphone at the same time. Okay. And I'll be able to experiment with that on the, in the one-on-one -on -one session. Absolutely. Thank Perfect you. Yeah, time that, to that's do a it. great reason to do a one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you. Yep. Um, I did forget to tell you that there is another option as well, which is a uh, like a digital mixer or preamp. So I, I have used many microphones and you can get a preamp that has a USB audio input and you can plug multiple microphones in there and you can actually run your computer audio out into your preamp. Yep, there you go. And that way, as long as it can grab that one audio source when you log in, that works. Okay, any other questions on that, you guys? Hopefully that gives you lots of options for how to make it happen. Which, by the way, Webinar Jam never answers my question about when are we gonna get sharing computer sound? And I think I've figured out more ways to do it than they have, so there it is. Okay, let's go live. Anybody want to play some hold music or or sing it? Do, 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 do. Nope, not that song. <laughs> yeah. Chuck for the win. Well done, you. You were ready just, with that. <laughs> I was just gonna start singing like do 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 do. Okay. Uh, we're now live, so you should be able to see the twenty three of you who are attendees. A, big button that looks like a play button just click play and you should see my little Conselmer Institute logo so let's see what some things look like now the chat has a little bit different look and feel lots of people will go 
be excited that the session just started. And so you can say, welcome everybody. Tell me where you're from. That is so, how many of you have heard that in a session, right? That's why I always like to start with more unusual sort of questions. Like, um, I don't know, what are some more unusual questions? What did you drink this morning for breakfast? I had like 64 ounces of coffee, right? Oh, I'm, I'm in the matcha craze right now. So it, gives them something else to talk about and engages them. Rania, is that you? Did you just? Nope, sure not. Oh, Ooh, we have a guest. Hi. All right. So now we're live. Um, the chat will kind of blow up. We have some control options here. Here I am on camera. Hi, whoever's in the room with me. Oh, they can't hear you though. I know. Okay. <laughs> um, they can see me. All right, so here I am in the there room. Uh, it does not do virtual backgrounds. It does not do like the cute little kitty ears. Um, if you use Minicam, it does let you do that. If you use that as your video input. Um, so now I'm live. You saw that I could minimize or maximize. Let's take a look at what some of these other things look like. And if you're watching this in Zoom, does it look super choppy? Yes, because Zoom hasn't figured out awesome video. Um, all right, here's my poll. Let's go ahead and publish it. Everybody take the poll. Oh, and also this is, if you're watching me a webinar gem, this is how I actually look without the Zoom uh, touch up your appearance. Um, one thing to is? note, too, is that um, if you're watching in Zoom and in Webinar Jam, you're going to notice that um, there is a delay between uh, what you hear and see in Zoom and then what happens in Webinar Jam. Um, that's going to be really important um, as you think about ways to engage uh, your uh, attendees. They're, depending on uh, your internet and their internet, there's, I would say, about a 10-second delay. So if you're going to ask a question that you expect people to respond to, um, you you know you need to ask and then fill. So be like, so what do you guys think? What's better, clarinets or trumpets? And then you can fill and say, well, clarinets are the obvious choice because clarinet players are the most good looking and blah, blah, blah. And then, oh, now I see the results coming in. You see what I'm saying? So you have to kind of stall. <laughs> yeah. So we say ask, elaborate, and then respond. Okay. So ask your question elaborate on it for just a minute and then you can start reading the responses and then remember on the recording that the the people who are listening um or we're going to be pulling those mp4s and it's not going to include the chat so it's really important that you read the person's name read their question and then respond okay so for example somebody type in a question I'm gonna end the poll so you can see what that looks like. Um, so I could say, Rania has a question here. She's asking, um, how did you get to be so good looking? Oh, wait, here we go. <laughs> Rania is asking a question. Do you teach online or hybrid? Well, personally, I teach entirely online right now because my community band members are not into being in person at all in any way whatsoever. So we're doing entirely online Zoom rehearsals. Thank you for that question, Rania. So it's read their name, read the question, then respond. Any questions on any of that? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Have you guys ever seen a replay video where they're like, oh yeah, good question, Rania. And you're like, what was the question? <laughs> I didn't, I didn't catch that. Um, okay, so we looked at polls. Um, you don't have to worry about offers. Let's show you the difference in the video play. You knew it was gonna happen. You guys hear it? See it? I do you don't hear it? hear it? No. Why don't you hear it? Oh, there it goes. Oh, is it because my audio is off? <laughs> my 13 year old just gave me the dirtiest look. <laughs> All right. 
So that's how we play videos in there. Um, and you can play videos and talk over them at the same time as well. So I could play this video. Um, this is a virtual band project that we did right at the beginning of the shutdown, like when schools uh, started to close. Um, I called up my friend Steve Martin at GPG Music Publishing and I was like, Steve, do you have a piece of band music that we can do like a virtual band with? And we'll just open it up to anybody. So this is like a totally volunteer group of people and from all over, it's a mix of teachers and students and uh, GPG totally did it, so. But you guys could hear me talking over it, at least in Zoom. Works in Webinar Jam too, okay. Any questions on polls, chats, videos? Uh, just a really quick question on videos. Mm -hmm. um, if, you're, if you're, I typically embed my videos in Keynote when I present through Keynote, and I was wondering if uh, it's pretty easy to toggle in between a Keynote and the videos that are in here, or if I should embed them for a continued present flow, or how does, is one preferable than the other? Sure. Let let me ask you this how many monitors do you have just the one just the one is it a mac or a windows it's a mac okay so what i would do is share my presentation in webinar jam like if you didn't want to have to pull all of those videos like if you have 10 videos right and they aren't already on youtube let's say um, then what i would do is screen share use my external mic um, speakers, right? So it's being picked up or loop back, whichever you prefer. And then you do a split screen so that you've got your Chrome browser with Webinar Jam happening in one side, but then you've got your Keynote in the other with controls. Now I'm not as familiar with Keynote as I am with PowerPoint and I'm even, right? So I know on PowerPoint, I've got presenter mode. So I turn off presenter mode so that it's just in the one screen. And that's how I've done it with the single monitor. Um, another option, which is really fun. You don't have a, how many other presenters do you have? It's just you? It's just me. Do you have like an iPad or a different computer? Yeah. So what you could also do is log in on both devices and you'll show up as two presenters. Interesting. And and so now you've we've got a little more flexibility. And Rodney's looking at me like, what? <laughs> but hey, you, it works. It's legit. You totally could. And you could be controlling your keynote on the one as one presenter and then being in webinar jam on the other and seeing what the audience is seeing. Let's, okay. let's definitely play with it um, yeah. when we do the practice session. Okay. Um, there's, there's a lot of options. Um, I mean, also like pre-recording potentially uh, could be something that works for you since it sounds like you have a lot of videos. Um, that way you don't have to worry about the audio being, you know, of lower quality or whatever. So um, we'll, we'll work it out. Yeah, I would say if it's five or fewer videos and they're a little bit longer to do them as YouTube links and, and let us put them in webinar jam for you, that's gonna be a better experience than screen sharing. Okay, because screen sharing, anytime you do that, the videos are going to be a little bit choppy. What Webinar Jam is, does is it uses the embedding feature uh, in the YouTube videos. So that's why it plays so smoothly. Okay, now if it's like lots of little video clips, like little video demonstrations, then do the screen share and, and book that one one time so we can test it out. Okay, super cool. Love that question. Um, any other questions? You don't have to worry about files because you're going to send it to us and we will help push that. Your room monitor will help push that. We'll get that all set up for you. So I don't think we have to worry about that. So the last thing I want to show you is, uh, the slide deck option. Um, it's super, super handy to already have it in here and not have to worry about screen share. There's some limitations though, because again, Webinar Jam is obsessed with the attendee experience. So it wants things to be as smooth as possible. So what it does is it takes every one of those slides that you have and it turns it into a picture. How many of you are old enough to remember actual plastic slides? 
it's like that. Okay. Um, but what's, what's cool about it is it does make everything go really smoothly, but you see how I have all these bullet points here. If I were doing this in PowerPoint, I might have it set that each bullet point comes up one by one with this. I just don't worry about it. Um, I try not to have a lot of text on my slides anyway, because then they're not listening to what I'm saying. They're reading the text on the screen. Okay. Take it from your friendly instructional designer here. That's a great slide. Big image, little text. I can elaborate. You're going to listen to what I'm saying more than reading my, my slide. Okay. Um, I can, Ooh, look at how short my hair was. Fun fact, shaved my head. Um, you can also change your transitions from one picture to the other. And if you're presenting with more than one presenter, you both have the controls. So you can easily pass it off. One of the webinars I did earlier this year was one with six of us, um, cause it was combined with me and, uh, the NAM foundation and NAFME leadership. And we just use the same PowerPoint and just took turns. And because we all had control over the controls, it was a great experience for the attendees, except for the 1500 people who tried to get in, but our room was full. What are you going to do? 5,000 is a lot. Um, back to the settings again, you don't, this is another thing that you don't have to worry about a lot, but I want you to know that it's there. So if I wanted to be big, you see how I'm now you can see me. So if I was demonstrating something, I don't have an instrument handy, which is weird. I usually have a ukulele. Um, but if I was demonstrating something and I wanted my thumbnail big, I can do that. But now look, I'm obscuring some text on the screen. Oh dear. But I can move my video thumbnail around so that I'm no longer obscuring text or I can shrink it down so that I'm no longer obscuring text. And that's something your room monitor is going to be trained to help with. And also we can help with, but now, you know, it's there. Okay. Um, any questions on the, um, slide feature? I had one question. Hit me. Um, so would you recommend using this slide feature with the PowerPoint? points that we upload or sharing screen to a PowerPoint or Google Slides presentation? Like what would be the benefits of either of those? I would, I, if you don't have a bunch of embed, embedded videos, I'd do it in here. Yeah, I mean, look how easy it is. Yeah, the other thing too is that, I mean, A, you can be secure that like it's here and you're good to go. Um, but if you, particularly if you only have one screen, um, if you then are sharing your screen, it's going to take up the whole thing and you won't be able to see the chat or any co-presenters. Um, it gets easier if you have like a second monitor, but um, yeah, I agree with Elisa. I, yeah. I, would, I would. Or even if you do like, upload. It, yeah, even if you do the split screen thing, like I was talking about, which, which you can do have two separate windows, one with your PowerPoint. Now you're sharing that window that just shrinks things down. So for your best experience, Send it to us and have us pre-upload it for you. Concierge. Okay. Any other questions? I love that question though. That was great. Okay. Last thing. Um, we're going to drop. Rania, can you drop the presenter link? Um, also, I'm going to, because there are 21 of you in here, I'm going to turn on attendees may request to speak. So if you feel like you're comfortable, you're confident, you've got your live room link, you want to go try it out, you're all excited, um, please just be in touch if you have any questions. Thank you for joining us tonight. If you want to stay in and try some things and come on as a presenter, you're welcome to do that with us now. And Rania, just drop that presenter link. Or if you're in the chat, you can you should be able to see at the top of your screen the little hand icon. And you can click on that. And that's going to tell me that I can invite you on to speak. So be in touch or join us as a presenter or have a wonderful night. And, and we'll see you um, next time or at your presentation, right?